Hello again internet peoples. Please note this is a re-release of a video from my old channel, A Digital Mind. Welcome back to what is the fourth in the video series about the mechanics of the indie game Islanders. Today we're going to be looking at how we can use colliders to manage the placement of mortal objects on our surface and avoid them overlapping. If working through the mechanics of a real game sounds fun and helpful to you, don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future videos. So let's get started. For a collider to work effectively, one of the objects involved in the collision must have a rigid body. Let's go and have a look at our Q prefab. And open it up here. And as we can see, our Q prefab presently doesn't have a rigid body. So let's go and add one. Add rigid body. And we must ensure we turn off the gravity. So we don't want our rigid body to fall through the surfaces. And as we want to control physics, we need to ensure is kinematic is enabled. Now that we have our rigid body set up appropriately, we need to adjust our collider to just be a trigger. Because we're going to use trigger methods within our code to detect the collisions. And finally, we need to ensure that our prefab is actually tagged appropriately so that we can quickly identify whether it is an object we want to detect the collision with or one that we don't want to detect a collision with. So let's go and add a tag. And let's add a new tag. I'm going to call this building to simulate the buildings within Islanders the game itself. We must go back to our prefab and actually then set that tag now we've added it. That's now our object set up and ready to go. Next, we need to actually go and look at the code and utilize the new features of our object. Let's jump over into our object script within Visual Studio. So the first thing I think that needs to be created here is some kind of variable that will let us know if we are colliding with objects that we've already placed on the surface. So for that purpose, we're going to create ourselves a private ball and we're going to call that colliding with building as our prefabs now have a building tag and we will set that to be false by default. Now we have that variable available. We need to find a way to set it appropriately based on whether we are or are not colliding with another prefab that we have already placed. For that, we're going to use the on trigger enter. So scrolling down to the bottom of our code and creating a private void on trigger enter and for the object that we're colliding with which will be returned within the collider called other we need to check that is actually a object that's been tagged as a building And if that object is a building, we actually want to set our ball to be true so that we know at that point in time we are colliding with a building. Now, what do we want to do if our code knows that we're colliding with a building? Well, initially, we need to alter the material of our prefab because we're in a position where we can't place it. Therefore, we need to change our code within the set object material method. And it's a simple little change. All we actually need to do is add a check to see whether we are colliding with an object or not. So we're going to put in an AND into our if statement. And we want 
the material of our object to change to a cam place material if we are not colliding with a building. So not colliding with a building. We'll then change our material back to the cam place material. Uh, otherwise, we are colliding with a building. So we or we are in a place where we can't place the object and therefore we change our material to the can't place material. So let's kind of have a look at that within Unity now. We've made them changes. First of all, build our solution. Check we have no errors. Transition back into Unity itself and hit play. So we should find that we can place an object. And then when we're hovering over that object, the material our object changes to the can't place material. However, as you'll notice, when we leave a placed object, our material does not change back, it gets stuck. So we need to fix that. So to fix that, we need to transition back into our code. And just like we have a non-trigger enter, there is also on trigger exit and again we want to check if we are actually exiting one of our building objects but on exit we want to change our collider ball our colliding with building ball to false as we're no longer colliding with a building let's quickly build that transition back into unity and run it. Ah, it appears we had an error. I overlooked that. Transition back to our code. I forgot to do the closing bracket on our new method. Build that again. Transition back into Unity. Hit run. And we should now find that we can place an object. Our material changes color on our object that's being placed. But when we are exit an object we've already placed, it alters back to the can place material. But did you note that actually when we exited, it changed all of our can place materials, all of our objects materials, which we'll look at shortly. And there is also one other fault I forgot to demonstrate. That actually, when we place our objects, we can place one object, we can place another object, but then we can place objects over objects. So that's what we're going to fix next. Let's transition back to our code. And to fix this issue, we need to look at our place object code. And specifically, the if statement in our place object code. What we need to have here is actually a check again of our ball. So let's put in an and statement again. And we want to be able to place our object if we are not colliding with a building, so not, and we check our colliding with building ball, and that will now allow us to place the object if we are, only if we are not colliding with a building. So let's build that code, transition back into Unity, run our game, and now we shall find if we can place an object place another object anywhere else but if we try and place an object while we are hovering over an existing object that's been placed we can't actually place another one so now let's stop all of our objects from changing color and just ensure it's only the object we're looking to place that changes color let's transition back into unity and for this purpose we are going to need to add a object placed ball. So in other words, we need to tell our code, our scripts, that the object has been placed. So let's add a private ball, object placed equals false to begin with, because that will be the object that is following our mouse. And then we need a way to set that, which then can be called for in our child object once we created it. So let's create a public void. C 
set object placed. And all that method is going to do is change object placed to true. And then once we've actually instantiated a new object, we have set it so it can place, i.e. we change the material color. We then need to call the method we just created. by calling the script and the method within that script of our child object. Now that we've actually set that variable and set the ball, so we know that the object has been placed, we need to use it. So to do that, we basically want our material to stay in the can place material once the object has been placed. And we need to add in a quick check into our if statement in our set object material method. And that check is to actually ensure that the object place is set to true. So now when we call the set object material from our update routine, it will say, can we place this object and is it not colliding with a building or has the object been placed? And if the object has been placed, it will ensure the material remains as can place material. Really, we should avoid coming into this loop at all if that is set true, but for now, we're gonna stay as it is. So let's build that code. We've got no errors. Let's transition back into Unity, hit run. And we should now find that we can place an object and only the object following our mouse will change to the can't place material. And we can do that again and again. And as we hover over an existing object, we go back to that can't place material. And we can't position an object when it's in that state. So, we now have the basics of placing our objects on the surface and detecting whether we are colliding with a building. But there is still a fault to look at, and I'll go on to demonstrate that now. So to demonstrate this fault, I first of all need to adjust our camera so that we can see more of the layout of the screen. So just raise the camera up a bit and I'm just going to rotate it slightly. And then we're going to hit play. So let's place four of these objects in a square next to each other. Okay. At this point, you can see our material changes to red, showing that we can't place the object there. As we transition across, suddenly it goes back to the can place material. As we're exiting the collider of one object and entering another, but the variables are arguing with each other and resulting in a can place equal to true. So we need to make a change to our code to accommodate this. So let's stop the program from running and we will transition back into the code. So what we need to do is actually add one more already available trigger method. We're gonna add it between the on trigger enter and the on trigger exit. And it is simply called on trigger stay. And again, we wanna check that if this is being triggered when it is touching a building. And if it is touching a building, we want to report that it is still colliding with a building, so we set our ball to true. And now, when we enter a collider of a building that's already been placed, we set this ball to true, which changes our material colour to red of the one we're trying to place. It then, when it remains with any of the colliders, it will still set our colliding with a building ball to true, so it will remain red, and only when it exits triggers completely and none of them are reporting as 
colliding as true, it will then change the colour back to the cam place material. So let's just close that method, build our project again, check for no errors, transition back into Unity, hit run, and create that grid again of four objects. We should now find we can't recreate that issue, so it remains red as we exit one object, go into another, it still remains red, same through the top. So I do hope that you found the video today useful and it's explained how the colliders work in Islanders for you. Please don't forget to hit like below if the video is great. If you've got any questions, ask them in the comments and I will try and answer them for you. Apologies for the inconsistent sound during this video, as it is a re-release of an old video I produced using old equipment. Thank you for watching.